Folks, hi. Guess what? It's local chat time. It is May 27, 2021. This is episode 21. Can you believe it? It's episode 21. Joining me, as always, is a man who thinks water should be more bubbly. It's Ian Gibson. You know, burping feels good and I want to do it. <laughs> Speaking of burping, also joining us today, Kyle Bailey. Nice. I did it. Burp on command. I hope that's on your yeah. Tinder profile. Um, if I had one, it would be. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Christian Mingle. There you go. No, it's uh, farmers only. Or farmers. That's what, I couldn't remember what it was. Um, <laughs> speaking of farmers only, we're only farmers here. Uh, we've got some gaming news to talk about. We got all sorts of stuff to talk about because it's the local chat podcast, folks. I'm gonna slowly fade the music down so we can talk about what we've been playing. And I'm going to go first this week because I'm sick of going last, even though it's not that often that I go last. Uh, I have a lot of games written down here, and don't worry, I'm not going to talk about all of them, gentlemen, so you don't have to panic. Um, my ongoing quest of Dragon Quest Eight is going very well. Uh, my new part-time job gives me endless amounts of time to sit at my computer and play video games. Uh, so I have played about, like... And not not like in a secret way. It's like I'm literally I just have to sit at the computer to like make sure things don't mm -hmm. go wrong. So it's like they're like, oh yeah, if you just hang out. Blah, blah. So uh, I've gotten a, made a lot of headway in Dragon Quest VIII. Uh, I think I'm getting close to the end. Uh, it's going great. I got a giant bird now, so that's fun. Um, I went on a bit of a didn't know what to play. And trying to find a new game to play so i i went on an xbox game pass frenzy so i tried genesis noir which is a indie game that looks really cool uh but it's just not my jam and i, I it just didn't flow well with me it's like this it's like all the they look like n neon sign people but it's all like noiry it's kind of cool uh definitely recommend what checking the, it out um, what's the gameplay of that because i've seen some screenshots but i don't really understand what the game part of it as is. far as I, I i honestly played like 15 minutes of it but what i was doing like a weird like kind of like point and click sort of thing so you're like moving okay. your character around it, there seemed like a cool conceit there but i i just wasn't on board um i played some multiplayer of battlefield 5 which was the exact amount i want to play battlefield 5 um five minutes yeah it was like it was like a it was one match it was like a campaign match um it was genuinely a good time yeah. like the squad mates i had were really good so we were like taking stuff down and like doing stuff pretty well with no voice chat or anything um but it's just i, I don't need to get into a battlefield game right now um another game uh let me go through the ones i haven't enjoyed uh not haven't enjoyed but red faction gorilla i have the remastered edition um and it's and i know you love red faction 2 right the demo for red faction 2 no Jesus or is it red faction 1 right red faction 1 okay Come it is on. red Faction. i i I, so I, I, can, like I can never remember which one it is um two's okay two's okay but okay. one is where it's at this game's okay but it's very like xbox 360 open world game and yeah. uh it, it looks pretty good but uh i i shoved it into the category of if I want a stupid let's play game to do like something with, like I'll put it there. Like I'm yeah. just going to shove it in that category. Um, and then Karen and I started resident evil five co-op, which does not look good on modern TVs because it like offsets your split screen when it's local co-op, like really, really tiny and not fitting the whole screen and i don't oh. know why but it's a nightmare um so, so I, intentional. yeah it's just, I, I the last time i played it was not on an hgtv it was on a probably like crt or crt something? yeah it must have been because i played through local i don't know if it was local online co-op so i don't know if i would have come across the issue but um yeah, we're, we're kind of just like running through co-op games because Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance was good, but it was a little repetitive. We tried a little golf with friends and that game's just not good. Uh, so we're I like that game. I, I mean, okay. it's, it's good, but it's not. I don't know. It's not. 
it's not enough content for like if you're looking for like a co-op game like we were gonna play through all the the holes but then we just ended up getting mad or i ended up getting mad that i wasn't doing well it is um, very frustrating <laughs> i will i will give it that it's i've 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 gotten severe with people over how severe that game can be that game also just like whoever goes first is at a disadvantage because the other people get to see hit their, what yeah. happens to them. So I started making Karen look away whenever I went first. Because I was getting <laughs> so pissed off. Um, so I, anyway. I will say, I, I, I played Golf with the Friends for about 15, 20 minutes, and I wasn't a big fan of it either. And I think for me, the problem I had was that it felt like it was an okay game, but it had been so hyped by a lot of people including one Will Crosby who had never played it, but kept saying, people say really good things about this game. We should play it sometime. And I played it and I was like, oh, it's just like an okay mini golf game. And so I, I feel like part of that game isn't, the problem with that game isn't necessarily the game itself. It's just that, I don't know about you guys, but it feels like expectations around that game are a bit too high for what it is. Did you guys, did you guys experience that at all? I didn't know anything about any expectations at any point during prior to playing it or while playing it are you playing on okay. console or are you playing on pc uh, I I played on console. yeah i was playing it on the xbox it's, i would imagine it's way better on pc uh, and i i don't know why but it just feels like it's better on pc yeah and, and okay. to, to ian's point uh as far as praising it i think it's a good it's a good uh causer of mayhem and mischief for streaming like something can go south so very quickly. I mean, there's a reason yeah. a lot of those old Rooster Teeth uh, achievement hunter videos were so funny, is because it just like went off the rails. But as far as like a um, like a two player just sitting on the couch playing it, it's also passed the controller back and forth, and it's oh. just like uh, yeah, weird. I wasn't enjoying. So it. I have you played it with more than just one other person? Because it's it's a completely different game if you're playing with like ten people. Yeah, that I know. With like, and, and, and there's a lot of good modifiers. Sorry. Yeah, my specific critique with it, why I didn't stick with playing it, was um, just because we were looking for a co-op game to play together. I did yeah. play through two of the maps by myself while listening to a podcast, and that was fairly relaxing because I literally like did super well, and no one was around us to see it. I was like, dang it. Um, Should have been streaming. I know. Always be streaming. That's what they say. Um, okay, games I played this week and I do like. Dragon Crawl Stone Soup. Sorry, Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. Uh, it is a roguelike. You can play it in your browser. It's great. Um, if you don't know anything about roguelikes, uh, and you just want to get into them and like slowly learn them and just learn what they're all about. This is literally the perfect game for you. Uh, you can play it on a browser or you can FTP in if you want to um, and just play it there. Uh, it's got a great tile set. You can go and click on other people, watch other people's streams like with NetHack um, and you can, uh, it's just fun. It's a good roguelike. It's what I stumbled across a Reddit thread about like what games to play when you're first starting out because I, I keep diving into bigger games like Caves of Cud and all this other stuff and people are like, yeah, don't do that. So uh, I've been enjoying that. Um, plus, you can just have it open in Chrome and play it. Um, indie game called Carto. I'll have more on that when I play more of it. What I, I played about half an hour and it was very fun. But the game I want to talk about that I played for about an hour today is called Man Eater. It's about a shark and you eating humans and all sorts of other things. It's a shark RPG. Um, open world. Open world. It is exactly what I wanted uh, when I loaded mm -hmm. into it. It is a fake Discovery Channel TV show that I did not know it did that. And I found that absolutely hilarious. Also, Chris Parnell does the, the voiceover for it. Uh, and I, I like heard his voice. I was like, is that him? So I had to go look it up. And he does a fantastic job. The The jokes are like pretty, pretty on, on point. It's not too annoying too. It's like only when you do like upgrades and stuff. But uh, yeah, the aesthetic's great. The, so you're a, a shark swimming around. Uh, and then you get killed 
and then uh, they take a baby out of the shark after he kills it and throws it away, and then you become that shark. And so you're, like, yeah. evolving and upgrading uh, uh, and all this stuff. I, I, like I said, I've only been about an hour into it, but it's just fun to eat things and shred humans alive, and it's also a huge fear of mine to get eaten by a shark. Um, so it's it's some therapy to uh, to do that stuff, so... Uh, that game's... I don't know if I can play it then, because my biggest fear is playing a video game where you play a shark. Eating... Oh my goodness. What's the therapy uh, for that? <laughs> you have to play a video game about playing a video game eating sharks. And we just have to go one playing level people. deeper. Always one level deeper. Um, so yeah, Man Eater's pretty fun. It's on Xbox Game Pass as well. Uh, I would recommend checking it out if you have Game Pass. If you don't have Game Pass, why don't you have Game Pass? It's also on PC, so you have no excuse if you're watching this. Unless you're on a Mac. I was... I was watching the street, the steam trailer for it. And as you were narrating it, it was happening on screen where they like kill the shark and the baby comes out. And it was, it was oh, man, very that, synchronous. I, Karen started playing it when I went to go grab my drink and, uh, she had just gotten the part. They do like a whole like deadliest catch like intro fake intro, and it's just it's very on point. I, I'm very it satisfied. Look, I mean, that. it looks really good. Like just yeah, like, it's gorgeous and it controls it really fun. well as well. Um, yeah, it knows what it is and it excels at that. It is a dumb shark open world game. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. And I'm glad I didn't pay money for it and I waited for it to come to Game Pass because all things come to Game Pass eventually. Um, Kyle. Uh, you want to go? What you been playing? Um, yeah, I've been playing. Well, we streamed yesterday. Me and me and my friend Jimmy. We played Destiny Two, which I have not touched in like a year. It's been a really long time since I played it, and it it was I it was okay. It was Destiny Two. You know, it was it was exactly what I expected. Um, yep, I yep. didn't have any of the new content. None, the, the blinding light or whatever it's called i don't know because i don't feel like paying 40 dollars for something i know i'm not going to play but yeah. then we did some pvp and it was it was the pvp was fun i mean it was it was a lot more fun than i remembered it being uh and still got my ass handed to me but um so destiny 2 you know exactly what you what you sign up for uh, i've been playing some apex legends with my my brother and my friend that's just been a lot more fun than than i think I also remembered it being I think the first time I played it when it when it first came out, I was like, this is not for me. It was too cartoony, too much sliding, too much movement stuff. And I was so ingrained in like Call of Duty and Warzone, that sort of movement style and, and play style. But now coming back to it, now that I've sort of run out my time with Warzone, you know, I'll still play every once in a while. But Apex is sort of it feels fresh to me and it feels good. Um, yeah. It's, it's yeah. fun. Um. Star Citizen, you know, we did a couple streams. Um, it's still Star Citizen, so, <laughs> you know, that's pretty much all you can say about it. And uh, GTA V, because they did a while ago, this was like two months ago, I think, they did a patch for the GTA Online, like the loading uh, was was parsing oh, information yeah. the wrong way. And then some yeah. guy, like they, uh, I think it was Rockstar paid him like $10,000 because he fixed the loading issue and it saved like... 70 percent of, of the loading time was cut down um and for some reason that announcement happened and i was like i've never really played gta online so i found a friend of mine who was like yeah let's start playing and it's been fun doing the heists and stuff and i feel like there's a wealth of content there that i just missed out on the past thousand years that gta 5 has been out and mm -hmm. uh yeah sort of re rediscovering it but other than that that's that's pretty much what i've been playing i've uh i've i've wanted to get back into gta 5 my brothers and I used to play it together and we tried mm. Red Dead Online for a bit and I think we kind of fell off it but they added a giant submarine to GTA 5 and I'm like oh what if I had a giant submarine yeah. I was doing I something I think it's like part that. of the new the new island heist they added but I've heard the island is not very good yeah so. yeah I remember yeah, I uh, we were going to do something anything. with it <laughs> and uh yeah. it was like oh yeah this isn't good uh well, I thought it was I, neat well, sorry you got what's up I was just going to say, before uh, we formed Subpixel uh, in earnest, Jake had his own YouTube channel, and he and his brother and his best friend and a couple other people would play the GTA heists. And he, the way he like edited those videos and put them together just made it seem so fun. And I, I was laughing hysterically while watching them, and I always wanted to have a group of people to play with, and I just it just never happened. So, uh, it, like I said, I'm kind of rediscovering that right now. Yeah, some mm -hmm. some of my first editing was uh, my brothers and I tried to fit uh, sailboats down each river 
uh, from the lake. And so I like okay. edited all those together. And one of them we were successful. The other one just ended up with like we were shoving. If you ram the boats hard enough under the bridges, they would glitch out and like jump through. They were like, <laughs> it's just like three hours of footage of us doing that. It was yeah. it was a little absurd. You know, it's funny you mentioned GTA five, though, because I I started playing i played maybe 30 45 minutes of it a couple weeks ago because it was on game pass and i was sitting there with the controller and i was like i just want to play something stupid is this online or or the the single player this was the single player and so i thought i just want to get into single player i remember one of my favorite memories of playing games with friends was in high school there was like five or six of us we were at my place some of us play games some of us didn't and we were just hanging out and playing GTA 4, and it was literally like, play until you die, and then pass the controller. And we, we would were just do that having... in college. We did that exact yeah. same thing. Yeah. And it was just, it was, and like, I knew the game, and maybe one other person knew the game, but there were some people there who had barely played video games, and it was, it was just always fun, you know, because they would step into the street and get run over. It was hilarious. And so I was like, I kind of want to recapture that a little bit. I just want to kind of mess around in, in, in GTA 5. And I realized, not just in GTA 5, but in all of them, they don't do a good job of just being like sandbox mode games because there's like 30 minutes of required cutscenes at the, or at least required mission sequences at the beginning of the game before they let you loose. And then you're so like, you're so downtrodden with like, well, there's no ways to earn money. Even if you have money, we've got, we've got store items locked. And I think what I really want out of GTA six is just a sandbox mode so that it, even if you have to beat the game once, you can come back and just be like, no, just just let me free roam. It's not necessarily part of my save. It's just open the whole map. Mm-hmm. Let me earn my way, et cetera. And, and with GTA V, it was like, I couldn't do that. It was like, I guess I just have to play the single player all over again, well, it's, which I didn't want to do, so I just put it down. I know it's on your list, um, Ian. Uh, I never played the fourth one, but the Just Cause series is kind of like that, where uh, yes. I think, yeah. do, you guys rem- do you guys remember on live, the, the yeah. way back oh, in the day, wow. the streaming service? um like the precursor to stadia uh i had an on live account and i had the little console with the the controller and everything and one of the free games that i got for being one of the first people to sign up was just cause 2 and i played the crap out of just cause 2 just completely just dicking around and not i i didn't care about the story i didn't care about anything i just wanted to blow stuff up get cool guns fly fast planes and it was it was exactly what I wanted it to be, and I probably sunk like sixty hours into that game and never touched like the story. Yeah, um, exactly. So. Yeah, and I I did the exact same thing, and I I really wanted to be able to do that with GTA Five. Yeah, knowing that I've beaten it, that it's on Game Pass, I wanted to pick it up and have fun, and it just uh, deliberately by choice doesn't want you to do that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, once once you finish the storyline, it's there, but you have to yeah. slog through the storyline to to get it. So. Plus, I mean, I have I have a hundred percent completion GTA Five save from the Xbox 360 two weeks after it came out. That save, as far as I know, doesn't exist anymore anywhere. Oh, so it's no. like I'm I'm not going to play the story again just to get to a sandbox mode. So it was kind of a shame because it's a great sandbox. They just kind of put a lot of hurdles to you actually enjoying it right off the bat. Yeah. So. Did they have when GTA first launched, like? what eight years ago 10 years ago whenever it was did they have like the rockstar store like the rockstar launcher and stuff like that not no, not on no, no, no. yeah okay and it, they had a social club because yeah. that was before yes. that was either with four or before four it was with but that but that didn't do like saves right like you couldn't log into no, that it was all it would, like, cross save or anything okay it was right. when um yeah because i played it so well, actually, it didn't even come out on PC when it first came out. It only came out on console. Oh, yeah, it was, it was like, only. I think it was like PS2 two years and later. Because I had the 360 version, and then online came out two months after the single player came out. Two weeks. Oh, was it two weeks? Okay, yeah, two weeks. And then I played that a bunch. And then when the PC version came out, that's when my brothers and I upgraded our 360 characters to you could one time transfer it to the transfer. Steam version. And so, wow, I totally, I remember I played that in college, the little college that I did. We, we just had a buddy on our hall who had a 360 and we would all just congregate in his room and just play the crap out of that game. And then I've probably played the campaign three times just because I couldn't transfer my save file. But wow, it's, uh, yeah. I, I definitely hear you about wanting that sandbox mode. I think that would be, and that would be like such an, 
I feel like it would be easy for them to implement it because you just yeah. you just start out the character with what the character has at the end of the game, or you just start them out with a set thing of money. Yeah. You can go into the ammunition store, buy like whatever you want. Like it's, yeah, yeah. Well, I was I was thinking even even I don't want to say easier than that, but just make it a third mode where it's almost like a Scarface or like a pull yourself up by your own bootstraps oh. mode where they just. They have a bunch of missions in the world. They have ways for you to make money and get items, kind of like in GTA Online, but it's a little, it's not quite as monetized. And it's just like, look, you can play the campaign, you can play online, or you can play this mode where you are just a character in this world. It's a sandbox for you to do whatever you want in, but you can work your way up the ladder that exists in the world. I think that that would be great. Get Rockstar on the phone. Yeah, call him up. Hi, Mr. Rockstar. I got an energy drink idea for you. Um, that's great. Uh, I like I like GTA Five. It's it's been a hot minute. I'll have to replay it when they they add it to uh, that new patch is coming out. When is that? September, I think. Oh, is that that's one that's Series X and PS Five, right? What PS Five first? Five. No, I think I think the only thing that is PS Five gets it free. PS Five owners get it free. Gotcha for a limited time, I believe. Okay. Is there is that crossplay? Could you? Could we do GTA Online? I don't, I don't think yeah. it's crossplay at all. Dang. Um, speaking of crossplay, Ian, what have you been playing? Cross. Oh, I've been playing some games, y'all. Um, I finally beat the Outer Wilds. Yay! Yay! Um, look, I got to be honest with you. Tell us how that, bad it was, Ian. The ending of that game, story, great actually playing the ending pretty freaking bad y'all um it took me about two hours to beat that game and i knew exactly what i needed to do and it was just such a pain because you know sl slight spoilers here but again the game's been out for a while but basically there is a very hard mechanic that you have to do in the game that is difficult to pull off even if you know exactly what you need to do even if you know the secret behind it and they essentially the final loop, because the game loops every 22 minutes, the final loop where you reach the ending, you have to go do something. No, you have to go somewhere, wait literally seven minutes, then do something that is a little tricky and screwed me up a little bit. And then you have to go to a different place and do the very difficult thing. And you have to do that not necessarily perfectly. It's not quite NES levels of difficulty because you can just reset the loop but it still is basically like at least 15 minutes per try. And it's like you screw up any of those steps. It's like, well, let me just restart the loop and wait seven minutes before I can keep going with this again. And it took me like five or six tries. It was very frustrating. Do I need to add detail, Will? Because you seem yeah, rather- Yeah, I don't remember any anything you're talking about. I've never right. played it, so. All right, so here's, here's the ending, right? You have to go to the Ash, the Ember Twin, Ash Twin, Whichever one, the planet that is full of sand, and you have yeah. to wait seven minutes for the sand to go down to a certain level. To go through the you cactuses, literally... right? No, no, Not to, go to go through, through a different different part of that. Gotcha. You have to, but you have to wait seven minutes. So if you know exactly what you need to do in the loop, you still have to go there and wait seven minutes. And then once you're done with the seven minutes, you have to wait for the sandstorm to pass over you, and you protected from it, but. Almost, there's like a three second window while the sandstorm is passing over you that you can walk into it into the teleporter. Oh, but yeah, if you yeah. if you walk in too early or too late, then the sandstorm takes you, and you're just like, well, I probably don't have enough time in this loop. You can still try, but you're probably going to run out of time. And ha and you hit reset, and you have to do the seven minutes. And then the second part is you have to go to a planet and avoid the anglerfish, which is basically if you make any noise or if you make above like five percent noise, they come after you. And so you have to navigate the space while like very carefully nudging your thrusters, trying not to hit things to crash your ship, but at the same time, trying not to make noise. And you have to do all of that in a single loop. And it's like two of the most difficult things in the entire game. And every time you mess up, you basically have to reset and wait seven minutes to restart. And it sucks. It sucks because it's a great story, but it sucks. I don't, I don't, did, you, did you have that? I just don't remember having that much. I just remember doing it just the once i don't remember having that much trouble with it i mean i did put the game down for a week but even then i tried the anglerfish part like five or six times i'd done it before because i'd gotten to the place why do you have to it's go just... to the anglerfish every time because the the vessel is inside 
Bramble Vine. You have I to get the warp core from Ash Twin. You have to go back to Bramble Vine. You got to go past the anglerfish, get to the vessel, put the warp core in, put in the coordinates, which I saw the coordinates in a previous loop. And then I get to the machine and I expected it to like automatically put in the coordinates for me because I saw them previously or like pop up a dialogue saying, hey, remember you saw these coordinates? And I was like, no, put the coordinates in. I'm like, great. Let me just pause the game and pull out my phone and look up the coordinates that I know, but I didn't perfectly memorize. So it's, it's just very frustrating because that game is like very well crafted. But that ending loop, which they know that every single player who's going to beat the game has to do that specific action that that's those specific actions in that specific sequence. It's shit, quite frankly. <laughs> like the rest of the game is so beautifully crafted, and they're just like, we're gonna do, we're gonna make you wait seven minutes, and we're gonna make you do this complicated, confusing thing, and then we're gonna make you do this thing that's pretty difficult, even if you know what to do. And then we're gonna make you remember something from like however many loops ago it was that you found it. Cause it could you could have found it in your very first loop, potentially. So it's just like great story. I did like the ending of the game. But my God, that that took a lot of that goodwill away. All that goodwill built up and then knowing what you need to do and you're hitting your head against the wall over and over again. I think we're just learning that you're bad at video games. I think, I think that's what everything comes I, down to. I don't is, there, is there another bad. way of doing it? Like, like is no, that the I only just don't, way? I, 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 this is nothing against you. I just don't remember having that much trouble with it. I just remember doing I, it. I don't... I don't think it's that I'm bad at video games and it's not to say I'm good at video games. It's just that we've talked about this before. I don't put up with I don't put up with BS. And so if you're doing stupid stuff and I'm getting frustrated by it, I, I remember it took me like two hours to get this. I did it for an hour and then I put the controller down. I was so mad. I literally rage quit the game and I walked away for a couple hours and then I came back. Like if you are doing stuff that is not well designed and is frustrating me and not because I'm not good enough at the game, et cetera, but because I can see like these are bad design citizens, then I'm I'm going to. I'm I'm gonna be mad about it. Yeah, well, I you think. Know. I mean, what I'm leaning towards is just some like maybe you weren't doing something the right way. But I, I think there was because sure. I also I thought I knew what to do, and I checked the walkthrough, and it said yes, do that, and so that that's what it was. Um, I I think it literally is just I have a very low tolerance for for frustrating poorly designed things, and if I had a higher tolerance then I would be like, oh, okay. I, I mean, I tried it a couple times and I got it. It wasn't that bad. But for me, I'm just like, this is literally the ending. I have figured out your puzzle. I know exactly what to do. Just let me end the freaking game already. You know? Yeah. That, that is weird. Especially since the rest of the Outer Wilds, it doesn't really feel like challenging gameplay. It's all about puzzles and knowledge and like surreptitious things and so for them to all of a sudden be like no it's gameplay you got to do this you got to do it right it's just like okay whatever anyways you gotta go land on the sun station now no screw you that I'm was that, game. that was that was a good couple hours <laughs> just to be clear still a great game highly recommend playing it but just be prepared for that it, it's it's like 90 percent smooth sailing and then you're going to reach some frustrating parts where stuff is not clear or stuff that is clear becomes needlessly difficult. If you find um, coordinates, write them down. Yeah, <laughs> just there's a journal on the ship. It records everything. It tells you exactly what important thing you saw, even if you didn't notice it. But the coordinates, no, you gotta remember that. Anyways, um, I've also been playing Mass Effect, specifically Legendary Edition. Um. I think this came out about two weeks ago. Uh, I sat down. I played the first game. I I think I liked it. <gasps> um, wow. I was pretty surprised. So, so my history with Mass Effect is I played it when it first came out. I played about a couple hours of it. Um, I've been thinking about why I didn't like it originally. And I think, honestly, a lot of it has to do with not knowing what that game would be. And also, I think I rented it from the library, which is basically like seven day rental. So I played this and it's like one video game at a time rental. So I'm like, I hear good things. Let me get this. It just came out and I'm playing it and I'm going like, I don't really care about this story. This gunplay doesn't feel great. Uh, and so I kind of just dropped it 
also horrible elevators. This is before they patched the elevator. So it was like, 50 yeah, feet. it was bad. The coordinates are in the journal. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's okay. We're on to Mass Effect. <laughs> I'm happy. We're, we, you made me happy already. Uh, so I, I think what I really like about Mass Effect is that it does an incredibly good job of world building. Like it, it hooks you pretty early. It's just like, check out this sci-fi world. Okay, look, I, I do need to say some bad things about this game. This game commits the cardinal sin of sci-fi, which is that people don't understand time or history because they're like, it's like 2160, right? It's like basically a thousand years in the future, but they're like, no, it's just like 150 years in the future. And then they're like, it's okay, it's okay. See, humans found alien technology on Mars like 20 years ago. And that's how we were able to jump so far in technology all of a sudden. Like they, they, and, and it's, it's just so freaking stupid. And then like the ambassadors, like the alien technology jumped human technology 300 years in the future. And it's like, no, it didn't. We've got faster than light travel. We got all these like alien species. We've got all these like carbon alloys. We don't have to reload our guns anymore. It's like, it's more than 300 years. You idiot. Well, granted, you will. You did have to reload your guns I, in the in the original Mass Effect. Oh they changed it for oh. two. That's a change for two. Wait, I thought the I thought the original Mass Effect was the overheating thing, and then the clips were introduced in Mass Effect Two. Oh, you might be right. No, were, you're, right. you're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. It's the yeah, it's the reverse. They added and the then clips. They just, yeah, they just carry that throughout the entire freaking game because they're just like. They're just like, oh, this race has been part of the council for 300 years. They're so long with the council. It's like, that's nothing. That's nothing. That's nothing in the history of the universe. And they're like, Ev, there's this cycle of people, aliens living and dying. This mysterious race that lived 50,000 years ago. And you're just like, that's nothing. The Asari lived like a thousand years each. So it's just like this, you stupid idiots. Why do you keep doing this? Every time, it's like every time you watch a sci-fi show, like 2001 A Space Odyssey, it was like, it's like, that was a bit far-fetched, but this is somehow worse where it's just like, we're going to name, look, uh, Escape from New York, I believe, takes place in 2020, and things have drastically changed. Just all this stupid sci-fi series, it just pisses <laughs> me off so much. It's like, how stupid can you be? Like, okay, look, you think this is going to happen in the future, right? I'm going way off tangent here. You think this is going to happen in the future, right? Pick pick a date, all right? Now, subtract that date from today's date to get you a year, a, a count of years. All right, now triple it and then double that, you idiot, because you're wrong, <laughs> you know? It's just That's like... like that was my problem with so with Resident Evil. Actually, Resident Evil series in general, but especially in eight, like something happens in the beginning, and then like it's like three, it's like maximum of six hours later, and the this thing that you had about six hours before is already in old dusty jars and separated across the game that you have to go collect i'm like how is that possible how did you have time to make all these yeah. labels and put them in jars and then make these intricate things like that's not how this works i know Ugh. it's just it's it, it just makes me so bad with mass effect because like the the world building and lore is so good they just screwed up literally every single date and duration in the game Every time they mention like a year or a difference in years or like how long since, it's wrong. It's completely like objectively wrong. It's way too short. Um, so anyways, um, I've been playing well, the game. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the only thing that's like that makes sense with the human stuff kind of annoys me. But I know like the Prothean stuff is like million billions of years, isn't it or something? No, it's 50,000 years. It's well, 50,000 years since the proteins it? were around. Yeah, well, since they were remember around. The, I, I see what it's you're saying. Been, it's been a really long time since I played the original game, and I'm trying to remember if in the other games, aren't there, like, justifications for why it's 50,000 years? It's like, I mean, I, yeah. There could be. Yeah, yeah, but there's it's, stuff. It's, it's just, like, every time there's a year, it just feels like, like stupid optimistic in a way yeah yeah there's um, especially with that stuff there's the, yeah how far where are you at in the game i beat the game I'm oh you beat the game. game well i, I am done with mass effect okay because that that year stuff is pretty much explained as to why i, I mean it, it they explain the cycle yeah but they don't explain why they are so bad at 
making up fictional dates for a world that they're trying to make realistic. No, but um, I'm saying that's the reason it's only 50,000 years is because that's when it last happened. No, no, I understand that. But I, I think the problem, it extends further than that. Like how humanity goes from finding ruins on Mars to like being buddy, buddy with everybody in the Citadel within like, I think it's like 15 years. It's, it's stupid. <laughs> um i feel like, like you had something you have to find something to be annoyed about and this is the thing you're annoyed about no, i'm gonna, I'm gonna I think, send I think the stream link to annoying. casey hudson <laughs> i think what's i think what's what really peeves me about it is that it's like we've talked about this before right like uh george rr R. martin named it a song of ice and fire when it should very clearly be a song of fire and ice, right, but fire because and ice that is, is a iambic. It's a famous poem. I but understand why he did it. It's iambic. It's iambic. Who cares? It's, it's, it's probably, probably harder to get the copyright for. Westeros. Well, my point is, it's one of those things where it's just like, it's such an obvious mistake that for such like a good work to then have an obvious glaring mistake, it just makes it all the more yeah, frustrating. But it's an right, obvious you're, choice. You're, they you're, did it on purpose. You're also, you're also the only person I've ever heard complain about that. So about the years in Mass Effect. It is it is definitely, I don't want to say a pet peeve. It is very particular. It's just I enjoyed the rest of the game so much to then have like a main tenet of it be so glaringly stupid is just like i i think you're I'm pulling just, okay. threads here i don't think i'm just happy bad. i'm just happy you liked it what was what was your favorite part about it what was the thing wow. that you were you were most surprised about while playing who'd you it? who'd you save <laughs> okay can we just say i just, i saw a tweet look th this I'm, i don't Wait, mean to you like save the nazi didn't you i don't mean to bash this was game. It ashley no let's okay uh, I think Kyle's a good idea. I've been bashing the date, even though that's that's a very small thing. Um, I really like the world building. Uh, I think they do a good, really a really good job of like establishing a mystery. Yeah. Um, I like the way the codex is set up, where essentially you can you can pick something up and you don't have to sit there and listen to it. It's not an audio journal. It's completely optional, but it adds so much depth. Like that is that is like man, that is like paycheck material for writers, where they're just like, hey, I need you to write like three paragraphs on how communication would work with mass relays across. Uh, interstellar and they're just like yeah yeah i got it i got it it would be like this and be like this and then you're just like i want to read that because it's well written you I know i think that I the that. um the reveal is very good for what the reapers are and also the reveal yeah, okay. the reveal of what the citadel is is really cool yeah you're I just remember. like oh like that dawning on you i think oh, it's really neat that whole that yeah, whole sequence that on like how they I do it is cool yeah, yeah 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 i i remember and then like you're racing to get it, it was very i mean cinematic yeah. is is a word that's thrown around a lot but like the the emotionality of the of the climax really builds up and i i think maybe that is what makes it so memorable is that like it it was so effective like in yes. in in parody with the world building and and everything else like it really is just a genuinely fun game to play out the story for and you can you yeah. can really see what they learned from uh kotor like with the different mm -hmm. planet settings and everything they just kind of like extrapolated that out and just let you do what you want and i think yeah. think that worked out really well for them so I, I think um, I think what really helped it as well, and what I really appreciated was they they have a lot of areas, right? And they kind of they know they know who's playing this game, right? They know it's RPGers, they know it's like semi immersive simmers, and they know that they're going to want to go and touch every single corner of every single map and try and pick up and interact with every object in person they can. And they do two things to just like encourage that behavior. And also curtail it. And it's fantastic. Number one is all the maps are relatively small and self-contained. And I love that. Um, I think where the game really started to click for me was when I was exploring the Citadel. And I was like, oh, great. This game is just going to have a giant empty open world space. And there's going to be like one thing over there and one thing over there. And it's going to be confusing hallways. It's going to be way too big. And it wasn't. There's, there's 
plenty of stuff in the Citadel, but there's not too much. So it took me maybe 30, 45 minutes to go around and put, put my nose into every corner, but I was always finding stuff I was enjoying. I was always talking to people. There was always, I don't want to call it a payoff because it's not like there was a big payoff, but there was always something there for me to be like, oh, look at this. Oh, look at that. Where does this hallway lead? Oh, it leads to the other side of the market. Oh, okay. I know what's going on in this space. And then once you're done with it, particularly in the Citadel, then you have the mass transit system the rapid transit system. So you're just like, I'm done. Okay, easy, quick, boom, 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 boom. Here, 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 here. I don't have to keep running around this area too much. Second thing they do, God, I love this, is that <laughs> it's, it, it was so stupid at first, but I, come to love, I came to love it. You walk in a room and immediately, like 40 feet away, and at the top of your screen, it says like door A, open. <laughs> and you're just like, why are you telling me I'm 40 feet away? And you realize it's because you could poke your head in the room like look around real quick. And if you see that prompt pop up, it means there is something in the room to click on. If you don't see it, you don't have to go in that room. You looked at the room, that's it, you're done. So you could poke your corn, your head in every single corner of every map and very quickly be like, there's something 30 feet away for me to go look at. Boom, got it. Okay, look around, nothing else, nothing else. I don't have to go look at every corner. I don't have to do the freaking Red Dead Redemption 2 where I spend 20 minutes picking up every individual thing out of a drawer. I don't have to do Horizon Zero Dawn where I get off my freaking dino horse and I snap a plant's neck. You know, it's just like, no, boom, there's something over there. Get it. Oh, boom. It's, it's, I, I explored it. It was great. It was great. Um, combat still sucks though. Combat's not good. Y'all combat's bad. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's just, that's mass effect. Yeah. It's didn't they, like, didn't they fix the thing where in the original you, you had to be like specialized, Yeah, right? You could only have a certain, but then they mixed that in the, they, in the they added two's combat systems to one. I believe that's okay. what they did. Um, okay because in one I, like it, I, I the first time i played one i had picked i think i i forget what class i picked but i was only shotguns i couldn't use any other weapon the entire game and that's that's awful rough i think i think they still they may still do that granted i picked soldier who can use any weapons but when i was reading through the class descriptions it was like hey you have biotic powers but you can only use shotguns and pistols so they may still have oh, some of that where you're, you're limited to certain weapon types Gotcha. Yeah. Based on the class yeah. descriptions, that's what it seemed like. And and I avoided the powers because I was like, I don't really care much about that. I, I assumed the combat was going to be bad, so I didn't want to make it more complicated other than just shoot from cover, etc. Um, my teammates are stupid. The enemy is stupid. So And I set the teammates to just deploy all their powers whenever they want. And so I'm just like, all right, let's do this. You know, the, so I, I was really, I enjoyed the game mostly because of the story and because of how quickly it was taking you through it despite the gameplay not being that good. It, it was kind of weird where I feel like the opposite is true for me for most games where even if the story is good, I'm still like, yeah, okay, cool story. Get me to some gameplay here because the gameplay is good. But this was the opposite where I was just like, all right, let me slog through this combat just so I can get to the next story beat. Yeah. Um, so I, I do wish that was better. Um, I will say, though, I finished Mass Effect 1. Um, and I started Mass Effect 2. I'm about three or four hours into Mass Effect 2. I don't think I like Mass Effect 2. Interesting. Let me tell you why. I'm Is very Martin early. Sheen. I'm you one. don't like Martin Sheen. Actually, he's okay. I don't like Miranda. Whoever that actress is, you need to pick an accent and stick with it because she does like the softest British accent 70% of the time. And she then she just drops into American. It, it may be, but it just keeps dropping to <laughs> America, and it's bad. Wasn't it's bad. she on Chuck? What was that actress on? Oh, it's her? Yvonne, whatever it is? I think it's so. It's not. It's Maybe she not. Keeps dropping out of the accent, and it's just like, I don't like your character. Now I don't like your performance either. Yeah, so. yeah, it's her. Y Yvonne Stravowski. Yeah, it's just, it's not great. I um, think two's got great characters. And, and oh, I, yeah. I'm assuming you haven't recruited every single character yet, so... No, I think I've only recruited two or three. Yeah. But even just the start where they're just like, boom, it's three months later. Boom, your ship is destroyed. Boom, we brought your ship back and it's three years later and all this stuff has changed. And it's like, you're doing way too much just to kind of bring me back oh, to the so good, though. Of, That's like the best part of oh, it, it's though. so oh, good. Because like at it's the end so of one, good. Granted, granted, I'm cheating a little bit here because I'm going from one to two with like two days between it and not several years. But at the end of one, I'm just like, okay, we know the threat. We barely escaped it. I've got a good crew. 
but let's build the crew bigger. Let's find more people. Let's do more stuff, right? And then at two, they're just like, no, we're going to start you over again. We're going to put you in the same ship, but it's slightly bigger. We're going to reset you a bit. And all your crewmates that you love, no. some of them may know about. Other ones you haven't heard anything about. So you're just going to kind of start over. And it's like, I don't want to do that. No, it's I great. Do I, think it, I think oh, it was also ship more attacking than like, you. they don't want to do the same thing Stupid. they did in one. And, Cerberus. Um, I, it was also like, I remember that E3 reveal when they showed that prologue. And that was like... It, be, being in anticipation for that game and then seeing that and having the hype just build and then playing it and I, I don't know it was for me that was one of the few moments in in gaming in the past like decade or so that i think has actually lived up to expectations seeing and, your shepherd die is crazy yes that was good i i just think when i think about the changes they made from one they moved to clips, which I'm just like, no, I don't want to have to run around the arena trying to find clips and ammo, which was something great about Mass Effect 1. Um, they, uh, they, they, it's not so much that they got rid of the Mako, but they, they did like a weird thing where now you've got to fuel up your little ship and drive it around the galaxy. And it's like, no, I don't want, yeah. it's, you're basically just, you're complicating how I am navigating a mediocre map system by now making me fuel up and drive between a mediocre map interaction. The music's points. good. I was just gonna say the map music is so oh, good. I love the map like, music. I don't even remember it's what it is. Great. Um, yeah. And oh, then so and then um you know, just kind of like I, I'm, I'm pretty sure your original crewmates are going to come back. Don't spoil it for me, but just kind of kicking them aside after establishing such a connection with them in the first game. It's just like, uh, I, and I don't think the story hooks you quite as good as the first one does. Um, granted, I, again, I'm only a couple hours into it, but I was really expecting everybody says the second is the best one by far. And I'm, I'm starting in a trench is what it feels like. I, I think it'll hook you a little bit more. Um, yeah. Also, I, there is one, there are a couple things that I think might anger you if they happen, but I'm not sure if they will happen. Um, but I am at least excited that you liked one so much. One, one's good. I like one. One's, yeah, one was good. I, I will um, say this, though, um, just to, to point out some other bad things that one did, which is the first two crew members you get, Ashley and Caden, are so freaking like vanilla stupid that i i thought caden was just like a dude bro and then i thought ashley was just like an npc i met on a mission that when i was first shown like the mission the crew select screen and two of the six slots were those freaking vanilla vanilla idiots i was just <laughs> like how dare you <laughs> How dare you? And then you start talking to Ashley and you're just like, I, I saw a tweet that explained it perfectly. Ashley would have been at the Capitol on January 6th. Like, <laughs> without a doubt. Yes. And I and I just like, and I'm I'm upset oh, because the, the way worst. the game, the way the freaking game presented it to me, she ended up dying, but I wanted to keep her around just to keep laughing at her stupidity. And it's just, also the Paragon and Renegade system, at least in the first game, like, just does not matter. It just really no, doesn't. Not at all. It's just like, there's barely any difference between the two. And then I maxed out all my speech stats immediately anyway. So it was just like six of one half dozen of another. So yeah. I'm, I am enjoying the game. I think it may be hyped up a little bit. And I'm honestly surprised at how much I am not enjoying Mass Effect 2 so far. Because I thought I thought, I thought thought would have to struggle through Mass Effect 1 to get to Mass Effect 2. But I I feels like it may be the opposite. What, but again, what are you playing hours. in Mass Effect 2? What what character type? Soldier. I'm going to keep doing soldier. Okay. I don't like the powers menu, even though you can bind it to buttons. I don't want to mess around with that. So I bring like powers people with me so they can do whatever they want. And then I only use like unity when I have to. And then I'll just shoot people because some of the guns are good. So I will I say I, I always played, I, at least I think it was in the first one, but Vanguard, where it was like yeah. you could use pistols and and I think it was pistols and shotguns and biotics. In Mass Effect 2, the biotics are way more effective and way just the, the implementation in the game is so much better than the first one. So if you're at all interested, like I don't even think you can do but biotic I can just, powers as soldier, but or like, I, I like just, any of the effective ones. But is there really a difference between me having the power and firing it versus me telling a, a an ally to fire it? I mean, if you make sure that that ally is always in your your loadout when you when you yeah 
I don't know. It's because some people uh, want to play with different characters and stuff, but yeah. So I may I may play around with like because right now I just have them set on automatic. So they do crazy stuff, but I don't have to babysit them. And I have noticed the AI, the combat AI and teammate AI does seem a little bit better in Mass Effect 2. So maybe I'll start enjoying the combat a little bit more. Yeah. When I'm not running around picking up freaking clips for my gun. It was Gotta it was okay in Mass Effect 1. Gotta get the I ammo. I uh, there is a, a weird thing to. Oh, I'm sorry. Go for it, Will. I was just gonna say I, I I'm excited for you to get through it, but I, I need to finish. I've never played three, um, but I started watching Giant Vinny and Alex play through three, so I need to finish that before you finish three, so I so we can all talk well, we about could, it. We could start it at the same time, not necessarily together, but that way we'll at least be yeah. bouncing back and forth. I don't want to play it. Mm, not worth it. Um, now, there's a weird thing with three. My brother had his 360 for a while and uh, three came out when he was like on a trip or something. So I made sure to get Mass Effect three and played it through that whole first week. And I had forgotten that he had a connect like like the second gen connect or whatever it was. Oh. And something weird that they did with three was you could do voice commands where you could tell your teammate you could say you could say like um, Liara. um biotic push or whatever and she would just do it and it was one of the coolest implementations of voice commands i've ever seen and the fact that i like found out about it halfway through playing it completely like changed my play style because you don't have to go into the menus you don't have to look at anything it, it was good. it yeah. was pretty sweet and um i was i it, it was such a weirdly specific thing to add on to that game and only for I, like i don't think you could do it with playstation um, and I kind of wish that there was like an implementation where it's like if you had a mic, you could say that in, in the yeah. legendary trilogy. But it was it was cool. I remember thinking it was really cool. Yeah. So just just to close out the Mass Effect talk, I do want to say one thing, which is I did it. I had sex. <gasps> you banged? Who'd you who'd you bang? Oh boy. Um, I banged Liara. Liara. Okay. I felt that makes uh, sense. <laughs> pretty good connection. Pretty good connection. Tali was just like it was like, OK, but you know what? You're doing your thing. I don't want to get involved in that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I was, there's a lot of games that have sex in them where it's just like, do it. Or Rihanna Rouge, which is basically just like several rape scenes. It's um, <laughs> not an exaggeration. <laughs> um, not pro rape scenes, anti rape scenes, but still rape scenes. Nonetheless, let's just um, say it more. <laughs> and so for have a rape scene, you know? <laughs> Like, I don't know if there was a way around this, but like I kept I had like five conversations with her where we kept bumping up against it and she would be like, I'm not ready. And I would be like, I respect it. And she's like, I'm not sure how to feel. And I'd be like, I respect that. And she would be like, I need time to think. And I would be like, I respect that. And it was very good because then at the end, I forget what happens, but like we almost died or something. She was just like, we got to do it now. And I was like, are you sure? And she's like, yes. And then it was like, it was so it was uh, like you know and i was very surprised by that as opposed to just being like oh you're so strong and handsome do you want to go out back and then it's like e -e 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 -e, plus 10 health and then minus 10 dollars and you come out the back you know you want a bathtub rubbing you know Fable but it was or whatever yeah so i was i was surprised at how well that was done yeah i i'm excited you're discovering the beauty of mass effect kind of makes me i, I want to find an rpg series that I've never really been into that. I mean, it's vaguely with Dragon Quest. Pokemon, you idiots! No, it's po called Pokemon. Pokemon sucks. Um, I, I, I still want to go and try the Dragon Quest games. At least the ones they or not Dragon Quest, Dragon Age games. At least the ones they say are good. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I have more things to talk about, Matt. Look, we're going way over oh. time this episode. It's going to happen. <laughs> Two more things, but these tie into why I didn't like Mass Effect in the first place. Number oh. one, the Mako sucks. It's absolutely awful. It's just. I'm pretty sure Halo 2 came out before Mass Effect. I'm yes. pretty sure. There is several points in there where they were just like, hey, remember that awesome bridge mission in Mombasa in Halo 2? Let's just recreate that over and over again. And they do a terrible job at not just the Mako and how it controls, not just, but also in how the environment is set up and how the enemy's in place and how you fight the enemies. And it's just like, no, you're just trying so hard to do the bridge mission and the end run from Halo 1 and Halo 2 over and over again, and you're not doing it. It's awful. Um, there's no Mako in 2, right? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't you think get so. the little, there's like the side mission with the fire. Oh, that's DLC. The Firewalker. Firewalker. Yeah, thing. yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Firewalk with me. Yeah. Second thing is one of the um, you know, there's a couple like main missions that you have to do in the game. One of them is on I think it's called Pharos, which is like it's like a dingy planet, and there's like this plant life that's taking yeah. over people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That mission sucks because that environment is awful. It's, it's mostly so gray. Mayo. Yeah. It's so gray, it's so dark. Even on even on next gen consoles, it's just really, really dark and dingy. And um, it's it, all of it looks the same. The textures are very monotonous and it has a lot of Mako bridge sessions, which, as I said, are awful. So I think that's where I stopped playing when I originally played the game and hated it was because I'm like, OK, let me get let me keep playing. Maybe I'll get something good. 50 second elevator waits. All of a sudden I have a terrible environment to do a mission in and I've got a terrible Warthog clone to, to play in. I, I don't blame myself that much for not liking it when I originally played it. Now that I realize I basically came up against that and didn't think there was anything better beyond it, you know, so yeah. I'm glad I'm enjoying it now. But there's some things in that game that if you hit them in the wrong order, not good, not good. Was I think that you had one more game on your list that you needed to go over, right? Oh, yeah. I just wanted to say so I, I finished Mass Effect. I wasn't sure if I was going to start Mass Effect 2 right away or wait a little bit longer. So I installed Just Cause 4 and I've been playing around with that a little bit um there's that that game is just that series is a catch-22 I, I don't feel like that's the right it's it's such a dichotomy gameplay is fantastic but the story and how they set up mission structures and how they set up objectives in the game they still don't have that down so i literally just skip yeah. every cutscene immediately i literally just i only go to missions that they happen to be in a place i want to mess around and it's it's like you were saying, Kyle. It's literally just treated as a sandbox. Like I yeah. I beat Just Cause Three <laughs> by clearing every enemy location on the map, but I only played ten percent of the story. Um, they just it's like they have the gameplay down so well, but they don't quite know how to build the game around it. It's yeah. it's amazing how bad their like cinematic storytelling is. Like yeah. it just I, I skip. I remember playing Just Cause Three. And I was specifically going to try and beat the story. And after like an hour, maybe two hours, I was like, I don't care. Like, I just don't yeah. care anymore. Yeah. But yeah, for yeah, so. I specifically like when I played it, I, I never beat it. Karen, I don't know if Karen beat it, but for I just like all I would do is just connect two people to each other or connect people to a, a rocket and then fire it off. Like it was yeah, just yeah. like a physics playground at that point. Yeah, but just to be clear, it's it's on Game Pass. Even if you don't have Game Pass and you buy it on sale now, it's it's 100% worth playing. It's still more Just Cause, a lot of fun, a lot more tether options. Just don't expect a whole lot of actual structured gameplay out of it. Sweet. Um, wow. Time for the news, which means we get to play the one and only news theme. Oh, this is going to be a two and a half hour podcast, isn't it? I'm fine with that, but there is so much news this week that we have to talk about. Okay. It's crazy. Time for the news. <gasps> Playing. Oh, cuz that's I do this I do this every week cuz I turn the volume down. Here's the news we're talking about news. It's gaming news. What's up news? Folks, you've come to the one and only little, little, little place in the universe where you can get the news about recent humanity joining the council. Today in the news, we talk about how things are happening, like things. I'm going to go first, and then we're going to pass it around. Oh, just like the bong at the party. <laughs> Is that what you do with a bong? I actually don't know. <laughs> At the party. Just like the crack on the spoon, we pass it around. I'm um, Will, and I like to party. Hello, my name is party. Will. I host this podcast, which means I get to talk about the Dragon Quest news. Hey. Uh, I was going to stay up for this last night, but I had to get up at six this morning, so I went to bed like a normal person. Um, highlights that matter to me. They announced Dragon Quest Twelve called the the Fire. The fate of the fate of the fire. Thank you. And they announced a Dragon Quest three remake in the style of Octopath Traveler that looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, this is hot off the heels of yesterday. I was looking up. So I'm coming to a close with eight and I was like, oh, should I play 11 next? Maybe I'll go back, play one, two and three on the NES on my NES classic because I know 
one is like only nine hours or something and the i don't want to play it on my phone and the switch versions are notoriously look horrible um but they announced three uh remaster and and i mean go look up screenshots of it it is so gorgeous uh the way they're doing that stuff with that and they it's just it's gonna be good so uh did you find the name there ian yes dragon quest 12 the flames of fate the flames of fate um they also announced dragon quest treasures which is a treasure like action rpg featuring two characters from 11 i'm not familiar with them and then they announced a couple those were the only ones they said were worldwide releases uh the other ones were japan only stuff that didn't really seem to matter um there's an offline version of the mmo that is currently only japan only so people are thinking maybe that will come to america but for right now grab it for you when i'm there yeah, can you just... Oh, man, I might have you get me Dragon Quest. I might be able there. to. I mean, I don't oh. know. It's, Switch is region unlocked. I'm trying to no, think. no, I, I, yeah. I forget is what it? it's for. I don't... I think it's... I think, like, the servers are... Like, I think I could probably play Dragon Quest Nine the way people used to be able to play... Uh, what's the... Fantasy Star Online before it came to America. <laughs> but, um, no, but I might actually have you get me other, like, a Famicom stuff. Oh. Man, I gotta, I'll send you a huge list. Um, so, yeah, that's exciting uh, as a recent convert to the Dragon Quest uh, stuff. Um, I'm a big fan, so I'm excited to see what they're doing. I'm also excited to become a fan of both. This, is, this applies to Yakuza as well, that I've become a fan of them right when they started just sending them to the entire world instead of keeping them japan yeah. only so it's like it's nice to uh like be there when stuff is happening now so yeah dragon quest exciting news happy 35th it's technically today in japan or was today it started last night 11 30 japan's crazy with dragon yeah. quest stuff um ian you want to talk about something yeah um i was getting a little spicy earlier so let's talk about some good news uh hot drop this morning according to bloomberg but not jason schreier if that matters at all um they announced that they have confirmed via sources that nintendo switch pro will be launched this autumn and may be revealed before e3 the reasoning being they want to have plenty of room for other developers to state that their games will be available on the Nintendo Switch Pro. So again, these are basically rumors saying that there is going to be a higher resolution, possibly larger screen, possibly 4K support, possibly DLSS support version of the Switch coming out this year called the Switch Pro. Um, I thought what was interesting about this article was uh, it's from Bloomberg, who is very good journalistic integrity. It was also then... Um, Re reinforced by other journalists who had not run with the story originally, who but basically said, I have a lot of sources saying the same exact same thing. Um, there was a bit of a um, if one of you could check Twitter real quick, it's there was a lot of hot goss this morning that it was going to be announced today because if it was going to be announced soon, it would not be on Friday, it would be today, and I believe it is now during the daytime in Japan. So I'm not sure if it's been announced yet or not, but basically things popped off this morning, even more solid confirmation that there is going to be a Nintendo Switch Pro and it may be announced literally any day now, according to these sources. I so, feel like there hasn't been a Nintendo Direct in a really long time. So I feel like that would make sense. Well, so there was one a couple months ago. It was the first one in a long time. But the other thing is, I don't even think this would necessarily be a Nintendo Direct because they have announced all sorts of big stuff just drop it in a tweet you know yeah they're all yes. over the place lately so i feel um, like something as big as a console release that there's would, would there would be like a video attached a video element attached to that yeah there's no yeah, no, no news not. out of japan right now yeah i don't well, see actually, anything I, I think nintendo's the switch light was a tweet wasn't it? I don't think it was an. It was not yeah, an. But that's but that's like a that's like a downgrade technically from like what like I yeah. I, I understand that because it's like uh, it's like yeah there's nothing I don't know um but yeah, yeah I mean that we have no idea how they're going to announce it because they oh, they've you know been what all over the place, you know like. what is trending <laughs> uh, it's funny uh, thirty fps is trending on Twitter because people want to play Breath of the Wild in sixty fps on a switch rather than the locked 30. put it on your computer I, in 4k I, wanna, I thought 
Kyle, I thought you were going to say people wanted to play Breath of the Wild at 30 FPS because it frequently drops down to 20 or less on the Switch. <laughs> yeah, it gets a little gets um, a little crazy sometimes. So I, I I guess my question for you guys is, are you excited for this and or are you going to pick one up? I've had my Switch since I think I got it the Christmas it came out. Somehow my brother and sister got it for me. It was like one of the greatest Christmas presents I've ever gotten. I've had it for a really long time. And I have not touched it in since uh, Animal Crossing came out, like like a few months after Animal Crossing came out. Yep. It has been sitting. I moved it from my parents' house to my apartment, and it's just been sitting in my little media center. I have not touched it. I have been waiting for Metroid 4. For I've had it literally pre-ordered on, I mean, I haven't paid for it, but you can lock in your pre-order or whatever on Amazon, which you should not do because don't pre-order games, but I'm doing it anyway. Um, if it's announced that it will be on the Switch Pro, I will buy a Switch Pro. Yeah, that would you? that would do it for me. I um, I don't know because I last year I bought the Animal Crossing Switch, and I really like that because if I still had my original Switch, I would just buy a Switch Pro and sell my old one. But now I'm conflicted because I like the look of my my precious animal crossing one but also i i throw money away constantly and everything else so i'm probably i'm not that worried that i could just buy it like i think kyle's right if there's a reason like if if they show me x y and z like breath of wild 60 frames a second this runs like that that runs like that then i would be like okay i will buy that but if they're like hey it's a marginal improvement like a graphics card sort of thing then it's like uh it's not really worth it but yeah, it all yeah. depends. Yeah, I, I, I agree 100 percent. I I don't play it very often now. I do like that console. It's got a lot going on. But I think the problem I have is a lot of the games that come out on it. It's an it's an it's an indie machine. And I would just rather play those on my Xbox or on my PC. Yeah. Um. So if, if they come out with enough titles that I know I'm going to be picking up the switch for an extended period of time, I will probably go ahead and switch over to the pro because I, I think about Link's Awakening. I played that in handheld mode and it had some frame rate issues and I could not play it on the TV because the stutter was so obvious on a bigger screen that it 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 it, it didn't really give me motion sickness, but it was just like gah, 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 gah. like it was so in your face. Yeah, the performance issues. And it's also like if the, it's more it's it's mostly about the games for me, like a there's there's not enough snes or even nes games on there that makes me play games on the switch over my nes and snes classic even though i yep. put my own roms on those it's like i still would rather dig those out and plug those in than play on the switch and then also if i if i'm gonna go and finally finish breath of the wild i'll probably just load it up on an emulator and play it in 4k on my computer that's that's because you're disgusting. But I think there's a point there where they have not supported the Switch with Virtual Console as they should have. If they had, then that would have that I would be digging because we we uh, will Will and I have just played a whole bunch of N64 and GameCube games just the other just the other weekend. Um, I I would have loved to do that on the Switch if I could have just yeah. paid five bucks each for them on Virtual Console. But I, no, we can't do that. Part of me thinks they're not doing that because they want to separate. They want to separate nostalgia out from their fan base, but then the other part of me is like, it's just free money. Like, yeah, print it's, it's more a money, money printing machine. Yeah, exactly. Nintendo yeah. doesn't like anything related to the internet. I mean, and they haven't for the past thirty years. Yeah. And it, I mean, it's I don't understand it, and I will never understand it. I I don't get why they don't do something as simple as here's fifty games that everyone loves pay five bucks you could play you know you have access to you know yeah. this content and it's library. not like, it, i don't get it it's not some uh, like it's not what i'm insinuating which is like they don't want a cash grab because they made that stupid mario thing i paid for the 3d collection like they're obviously yeah. trying to scam people not scam people but force money out of nostalgia why won't you like and it, it's not a licensing thing like some games they are a licensing everything. thing but their core games like yeah. they own everything just put it it's, on the switch it's just really it's really frustrating and i it's been that way and there have been you know articles that have been written the past five years that have said this exact same thing that we're talking about and nintendo just doesn't they just don't do anything and yeah. i i can't help but wonder if that's like the top execs at nintendo 
just like I have a feeling that within Nintendo itself, probably a large majority of people would be like, yes, let's do this. It's what people want. And executives, not necessarily like Miyamoto or anything. I mean, I, maybe, but they just don't want to. There's some weird yeah. like tradition thing where it's like, we just don't don't want to do this. Well, I think the other possibility is they are they're taking a, a risk or a bit of a gamble where they are saying we can make these available for cheap now and make a lot of cheap sales now or we can play the disney vault strategy where we don't release these games until years later and then we offer them as part of a 60 dollar bundle for a limited amount of time they do they do the disney vault thing but i feel you like the game for a period of time and that way when you do come out with a remaster or a remake or a port you can charge more and get much higher sales rather than having it readily available like Skyrim for every console down the line. And it, yeah. it's a bit of a risk. It's a gamble. I, I would agree gamble. with that, but Disney's entire library is up on Disney plus. Yeah. They, Disney has backed like, away from the Disney vault. Yeah. yeah. I think, I, I guess, I don't know, maybe, I, I don't know. I, I can't pretend to know what Nintendo is thinking, but I wish that they would relent on their relentless, like, attack on anything having to do with multiplayer with ease of access uh the, everything with nintendo when it comes to the internet is so much more difficult than it needs to be put an and ethernet it's port on the dock just, why don't you do I that get it. that's that, that they don't need to do that though that thing gets so much I better speeds with an ethernet it does it does <laughs> it's if they're better. not if they're not focusing on multiplayer games and and most people are not going to be able to run ethernet to their console anyways then i don't why care could, um yeah that's just uh yeah i'm uh, right now i'm on the fence if i would get a switch pro but definitely if they come up with those perks and they're they're really out there uh with the benefits of it and they seem logical i i think i could go for it uh with the possibility of just i mean i could probably just sell my old one anyways um kyle what do you want to chat about sir um i'm just gonna pick one of these at random <laughs> It's it's there's not really much to talk about. A new still of Tom Holland in the upcoming Uncharted movie with Mark Wahlberg playing Sully Sullivan, whatever his last name Hot. is. Um, I do not give a crap about this movie, and I, I say that I say that as someone who very much enjoyed the the Uncharted series Same. and and love love the story that they told. Um, regardless of you know issues we may have with the way it was told or or you know whether or not it's more cinematic than it is a game but i enjoyed playing around in that world and and love those characters very dearly uh mark Wahlberg does not belong in uncharted <laughs> i'm sorry he really really doesn't why didn't they cast um oh god what's his name from from evil dead um oh uh, uh yes uh, um sam bruce, uh, bruce campbell i feel like he would have been a great yeah. sully um like in Burn Notice, he's practically like, Sully in Burn Notice. Yeah, yeah I, I will say, if they took Mark Wahlberg, right, and they put a ridiculous mustache on him, and they had him play a young Sully, I could see that working in kind of like a tongue-in-cheek parody way. But no, he has sure. no mustache. It's just Mark he's Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. And like, I don't care about Uncharted, but I will admit it is very cinematic, and it does a great job of that. And to have young Uncharted... And to have basically a complete miscast for Sully, and then to have Tom Holland out there giving quotes about how he is not, he doesn't feel confident about how he acted in the Uncharted movie and does not want to act that particular method anymore in the future is like this movie. There's all sorts of warning signs around it. Yeah. It's, and it no, shifted, no. shifted directors, right? And it's, it's yeah, been plagued by production issues, I know. Um, I don't give a crap about it. I, I'm, the only thing I'm mildly interested in seeing is the trailer. Yeah, and I will make my decision about it based on a trailer, which I always tell people not to do. But in this case, like, I don't know. You, you, I'm, yeah. I, I just, I'm just thinking, like, when do I want to watch this movie? And I'm very excited to be on a plane, and it's just <laughs> there, and I'm like, yes. perfect. Oh, I don't have to spend any money. Me. My time is already being wasted. Let's go ahead and watch this movie. I am ready for it. Um. Yeah. That's. That's, I mean, I, I'm the same. I'm a big fan of the Uncharted games, um, but boy, I like those games are movies enough as they are, and I think that works for them because they're long enough to accommodate that, and you know the characters well. But I, I just don't see 
I don't see this working out, uh, especially kind of, with Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> yeah, I just don't. I mean, I I don't. He doesn't even look like him. Like I I it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Um, just floating floating an idea out there. Whether it's for Uncharted or some other movie that we can watch on home video, would you guys want to do like a red letter media kind of viewing party sort of thing? I feel like that would be really fun. We could all get together. Maybe not Jake because he lives in Indiana and we don't like people from Indiana, but um, it's true. I, I feel like it would be fun. I, I'd be yeah, down. Do yeah. Fun, also, when we get to the sub pixel rating system of video game movies, um, there we go. That'll be that'll Ooh. be a fun time. <laughs> um, just to uh, quickly add, this this isn't my story, so don't don't take my turn, podcast gods. Um, uh, speaking of Uncharted, uh, during a PlayStation investor report, they had a page about bringing games to PC and broadening their social strategies, and uh, it said already done Horizon Zero Dawn, and then happening now, Days Gone and Uncharted Four. So I do believe they are bringing Uncharted 4 uh, to the PCs. Nothing's formally announced. It's just extremely likely because why else would you put that on a slide? Uh, that's pretty interesting. I've, I've actually been thinking of replaying Uncharted 4 uh, just because it's been a while. And I, I someone there were some screenshots of it or something because that game is so long that I like in a bad way. It's too long, but it's also very good. And I like really? was remember. I feel I felt like it I thought was, it was shorter than three, I, which I felt thought like it was, was one act really too long. long. As somebody who didn't finish the game, I remember people saying it was 15 to 20 hours. I it, it went by pretty fast, but I remember oh, okay. thinking it was the end more than once. It, it's still a good game. It, it's one of my favorite favorite Naughty Dog games and favorite it's also games. Gorgeous! I would oh. love to see. It. And I, I'm gonna say we called it because we talked about this. I think the last time I was on, um, with what Sony was doing with Death Stranding and uh, now Days Gone. Yeah, because we were, we were talking about Days Gone. Um, they need to just do this all yeah. the time, all the time. Just it's again same thing as with Nintendo. It's free money. Like you've already made this thing. Just. Put it yeah, out yeah. on a different so, platform. I saw a very good tweet today, um, basically stating that the number of PC players in China is triple the number of total PS4 players worldwide. Wow. Uh, and as far as I remember, the PS4 never officially came out in China because of their restrictions on consoles. So there are essentially PS4 games that would probably do gangbusters in the China market. But they don't have the console to play it on. So release it on PC, you know, go through the, the China accreditation for the title and yeah, go to the bank, buddy. Make sure you don't say Taiwan is a country the... and you're good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I mean, what? You didn't mean it, Maggie. You didn't mean it. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> I mean, you can. Oh There's nothing wrong with it. It's actually a perfectly above board. <laughs> I just can't believe it. Woo, folks. Um, um, just <laughs> say that in a hot tub on Twitch. Oh, oh man. God. Are we going to really uh, talk about that? I think we should. Uh, well, Kyle, you, you dived into it. So how about you get a little brief summary before I just start screaming? <laughs> Wait, are we attracted? I don't. I don't. I mean, t I read through the post that that Twitch put out about this whole apparently people are doing videos in hot tubs now, which is a thing. Um, and the way it's written is just. Weirdly blunt for a company as big as Twitch is. And uh, yeah, I mean, Ian, please just go off uh, because I don't even know what well, to say. I, about I, it. How about you give us or will if you want to. So uh, I'm looking. I'm just trying to find the specific line that I found. Yeah, that's kind of what I was extremely for. funny. Well, let, me, let me run down yeah. the story, though, which is basically um, the hot tub meta is essentially you are not allowed to wear swimsuit attire on Twitch unless it is context appropriate. For example, you're at the beach or you're at a swimming pool and you're streaming, uh, you know, kind of like an outdoor hangout stream. However, there are streamers who found a way around that rule that Twitch apparently enjoys and is okay with which is that if you are sitting in your living room, such as I am, and I put an inflatable pool with a couple cups of water over there, I am now allowed to wear a swimsuit. So essentially you have these streams with largely female streamers 
wearing very scantily clad bikinis with a pool in their living room and it's okay according to Twitch and the entire Twitch front page suddenly just becomes barely clad women on a web page that children go to. Like Twitch is, you're allowed to go to Twitch as a child. It's not an adult-only website. And Twitch is not just about gaming anymore, but it is still largely about gaming. There are certain categories not related to gaming, but it is for all ages. And so to have that content be featured on the front page of Twitch, which is essentially just like non-nude cam girls begging for money and doing sexually suggestive things for money on cam is ridiculous. And then for Twitch to come out and finally clarify it and say, look, just to be clear, we're still okay with this, but now we're going to make it its own category just so that we can filter advertisements based on whether it's a hot tub stream or not. And to say that it's still okay, even though they very specifically say that sexually suggestive content is not allowed on Twitch. What do you think this is, you idiots? It's sexually <laughs> suggestive content. It's what they're doing. They're making sexual innuendos and sexual imagery 24-7 on these streams, which is against your rules, which you reiterated in this press release. And so, yet you're still saying it's okay. Specifically with this press release, and I, I mentioned that it was blunt. And this this is sort of the the line that I was talking about. Is uh it's in the second paragraph at the at the last two sentences or yes, last sentence that's what I was of looking the second for. paragraph where it says <laughs> says second, while we have guidelines about sexually suggestive content. Being found to be sexy by others is not against our rules, and Twitch will not take enforcement action against women or anyone on our service for their perceived attractiveness. <laughs> That's just such a strange sentence to read. So it's uh, get your feet I mean, on the stream, boys. <laughs> it's time. Yeah, I'm, Tar <laughs> where's Tarantino? You know. Um, oh. I, you know I, I. Oh, it's just such a weird. <gasps> stance to take for for a platform that yeah is largely focused on on children and and what children yeah. want to view you know they love their streamers because they're crazy and this is the wrong type of crazy i think in in my opinion but i i don't know yeah. i mean so so i have another quote here which is they, they keep talking about sexually suggestive content and they drop that line you talk about where it's like it doesn't matter if you think they're sexy that doesn't mean their content is sexually suggestive which which i agree with however they have this line where they clearly say quote our intention with the sexually suggestive policy was to draw a line on content that is overtly, overtly. or explicitly sexually suggestive but not to ban all content that could be viewed as sexually suggestive what do you think the hot tub stream is they're putting a fake pool in their living room and putting their toes in it just so that they can wear the tiniest bikini possible on stream and have their breasts take up a large part of the frame and then literally do things like, oh, whoever donates 100 bits, I'll bend over for you. Oh, I, if we get a 1,000 subscribers, then I'm going to go do squats in the background in my bikini. That is sexually suggestive content that you are literally saying is still not allowed and yet you're allowing it. What are you doing? This is ridiculous. It, I think it may be about the money. They're probably making a shitload of money. I was just, I was just going to say, I'm sure it's, it's making about them the money. a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, that said, if we do get a thousand subscribers, I will do, go and do squats in a bikini. Uh, I'll, I'm going to be honest with you. I was, I was gonna put, I was gonna put a, a genitalia sock on. If I had any balls, I would put a genitalia sock on and do you my have own any balls. <laughs> because it's allowed. It's allowed. I'm allowed to do whatever I want. Yeah, but you don't have any perceived attractiveness. Is the problem. <laughs> Plus, honestly, the big problem is if I get banned on my personal channel, I'm not allowed to appear on any other Twitch streams. <laughs> so Aww. I wouldn't be allowed. Wait, we can't anymore. have Donald Trump on here? Oh, he's on next week. We can, if we can find him. <gasps> Dang yeah. it. Him and the um, ghost of Ronald Reagan. <laughs> so does that, so does that mean, does this mean that, I mean, the hot tub thing is, is its own thing because it's something you can put in the background of your, of your video and it's just there and people understand yeah. why it's there. Does this mean that you could also like, if you were wearing a, a towel or, or a bathing suit, you could stream in a shower? I don't think so. Because, because the specific loophole is that they allow you to wear swimsuits as long as you are at the pool or the beach. Okay. Yeah. And so they, they have faked the pool atmosphere so that they can wear a swimsuit. I feel like okay. it's the same thing for like when people try to do like educational purposes on some websites for pornography, they're like, no, it's educational. 
like that original loophole yeah. like this is it's the same taking advantage of it yeah and i just want to be clear there are there are plenty of people out there who say it is sexist for people to not like these streams or to act like they are a problem that um that we're trying to say that women can't do what they want with their bodies for money i want to be very clear uh, I'm pro pornography. I'm, I'm even, you know, pro legal prostitution if you want to do that, but not on a website that does not allow it by their own content restrictions and also caters to literally all ages. You know, I, I, my, 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 my two nephews, they go on Twitch, they watch Twitch streams. I don't want them seeing this. The, you, you either need to turn the website into 18 plus only. <laughs> Turn it into a porn website and embrace this, or not allow it. Yeah. There's not really a or spin, here. spin it off. And, and, and I uh, to uh, go along with you on that. It's not like some sexist thing, or we're being con conservative or whatever. It's I view the same way as like people who try to get around and do gambling streams or fake gambling websites. Like yeah. it's that same thing. It's like you don't want a kid to stumble across that and then suddenly be like, oh, I found money here. I'm going to start gambling on stuff like buying loot boxes and stuff it's the same thing it's a thing you don't want a child to stumble in onto in which a, st a ch child won't stumble into a porn website thinking they're allowed to be on a porn website yeah versus yeah. it's the same thing with the youtube kids stuff that was going around with like the gross spider-man and elsa and stuff it's just like it's crappy practices trying to get tons of views and literally exploit children it's just yeah, yeah. yeah uh yeah uh and and Ooh. yeah so uh more, moving on to a more fun topic um is uh a fun fun topic fun topic There's no uh, more fun oh topic. i didn't even see that cyberpunk one i don't care about cyberpunk i just i just added it oh that's hot there's um, a fun one can i bring up a fun one real quick yeah you do the fun one um i saw that somebody put this on here i believe uh will did amazon is buying mgm studios <laughs> For 8.45 billion, there's not really a lot uh, video game related here. Um, not so much as there was with Warner Brothers being spun off to Discovery because there were studios involved there. But I will say one thing. Warner Brothers owns Stargate. I was just going to say that. Oh my gosh. Maybe. I'm, they've been teasing for years now. Some sort of comeback series. It may be happening, folks. We'll bring back Stargate thing. Universe. I was just going to say, Stargate Universe was my favorite. I watched it in college. So it so ended good. on a perfect ending. It ended on a perfect, uh, not a perfect ending. It ended on a perfect point to start it again and a perfect yeah. excuse to not have the same people if people can't come back. It is, it is, it ended on the perfect note for that. And it's possible. It's so possible. So please just bring it back. Um, that is exciting news. Yeah, I put that on here because I wasn't. Sh I put it on here because I wanted to go see if it did have gaming implications because I wasn't sure. Um, with like the, the James Bond stuff and everything, this. but the only I thing I think, think of is so. when Disney bought Star Wars, it had video game implications because Disney basically said, "We're gonna restart all these licenses. We're gonna look at all of them. We're gonna start licensing out this IP again." So it's possible that Amazon's gonna look at all this MGM IP, like James Bond, etc and is going to shake up a lot of those licensing deals, they may become very frivolous with it and start saying, you know, with like Warhammer, whatever ideas you have, pay the licensing fee, make the game, you know, on any MGM property. So that that could be exciting if that happens. So the interesting thing is that IOI is making their James Bond game. And yep. um, as far as the theatrical releases of James Bond, um uh what is it uh e, e uh, i forget what the it's three letters the 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 company that owns james bond owned by barbara broccoli oh is it eon might be eon yeah eon entertainment or eon whatever they have complete creative control over the movies and they're guaranteed theatrical releases i think in order to keep that creative control they had to let amazon say you can go make a tv show you can go do whatever you want in this other space in in the industries um, that we are not associated with. So video games, uh, I, mean, I don't know, like audio, like books or something. I think they had to give up some of that control in order to maintain their control of the cinematic sort of version of James Bond. So I don't know what this means for IOI, but um, I don't know. I'm I'm interested. 
I just want Stargate. That's really that literally as soon as I read that, yeah. I was like, what do they own? What do they own? And I saw Stargate. I was like, <laughs> it needs to happen. Oh, the three uh, of us should play that Stargate Roblox game. We could be really good at it. <laughs> it was so good. Kind of good. Oh, Kyle, you should go watch that archive. It was two weeks ago, Roblox. I don't I don't know if it, I want to dive into Roblox. Oh, this is not a was, joke. We basically clicked a Stargate Roblox game, and it was like crazy in depth and had a like lot actually good. Going on. Yeah, it was oh genuinely cool. There have been a couple of those. Good, but it had a lot of great content and a lot okay. of passion behind it. It seemed like. Um. Uh, okay, moving on. Uh, I wanted to. There was another thing I wanted to talk about, and I. Every time, hey, oh, I just want to say more good news. Uh, after I last week, I had to state the obvious that Starfield would be Xbox exclusive. Uh. The, they announced the Xbox and Bethesda game show combined this year, obviously. Um, I mean, not super obviously, but we were discussing this last week, whether it would be confirmed or not. Um, June 13th, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Um, this is from Shinobi, this tweet. Expect world premieres and new titles on Game Pass. Uh, extremely exciting. And then it's also people comparing the logo in the picture to the logo of Starfield. And uh, yeah. which it it's matches the same. up it's the same, pretty much yeah. exactly. So uh, yeah. I, this just gets me. Uh, we've talked about this before. Is I'm just excited for E3 again. Like just the 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 video game week um, is always so nice. Uh, I have good memories of taking off from work and just staying at home and watching that stuff. Um, I have good memories of being at work and <laughs> reporting yeah. reporting I mean, E3 too. articles. <laughs> um yeah so uh i'm very excited for that can I, uh, can I just ask a question real quick yes ma'am are you guys excited for starfield yeah i'm pretty excited I, i'm i'm excited for what i hope it will be yeah i as I, far as what it is and what it will be i i don't i need to yeah. see something you know it's just between fallout 4 and fallout 76 basically the last two bethesda studio releases i i don't i don't know i don't i don't know yeah be I, I see i i like fallout 4 um so i like i would take i mean other than my few pers persnickety stuff not persnickety but complaints with it with like the the sit towns and all that stuff like if they just make a sci-fi fallout 4 or sci-fi skyrim base level i think i think i'd be that's enough to get me in and, and playing it especially it's going to come to game pass like why wouldn't i yeah, yeah, I mean, starting a new IP, like, you have to have, especially with Bethesda's pedigree, either good or bad, whatever you think about them, um, lately, like the last, you know, five, six, seven years, you really have to be careful about what you're, what you're putting into the game that people are expecting and what they're not expecting. And I yeah. think that Starfield is, th they need to, they need a home run. Basically, it can't yeah. be milk toast. It can't be, you know, just sort of middle ground stuff. It has to be something. And, and I remember when they first announced it and they said, you know, it's going to be built on the same engine that we're using um, right now. Like like they, the, the way they phrased it. And I know there's this whole discussion about game engines and how they evolve and change and everything. But out of the gate, them announcing it, people were like, it's, it's so it's going to they're confused. You know, it's going to look like Skyrim. Yeah. Like, I want something better than that. And even just working PR for, for that, like, you have to be on top of that. And yeah. going going into this E3, if they do anything with Starfield, they have to come out like guns blazing. And I, I don't want just a teaser. I don't want Todd Howard going on stage talking about whatever in his leather jacket. Like, I, <laughs> I, I, just, I just want the game. I just, I, I don't know. Uh, and it was kind of... It, we we uh, talked about this a little bit with this uh, state of play that was going on today, and I think that we're we're still going to talk about Horizon, right? Yeah. Did anyone watch State of Play? Um, I watched it. that that like for, it was 14, 16 second or sixteen minute uh, segment of the game. Like that's sort of what they need to do. Yeah. Not maybe not content wise, but they need to get the hype going, um, and they need to do it the right way. Because if they don't, I don't think that Bethesda's uh, yeah pedigree can withstand you know but I, but i think todd know. howard especially has people 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 realize now not to trust him entirely in a press conference with a demo because he will say things and he will show things that fall apart in the game immediately not necessarily because they're broken but because they're you know an inch deep 
You know, if you yeah, think about Skyrim, where you, yeah, like, oh, there's a mountain, you can go there. Oh, we're doing dynamic dungeons. And it's like, well, it's really just a really badly made procedural algorithm. So all the dungeons suck, yeah. you know, and you, you, fear, you realize that the third dungeon in. So it's, I think people have caught on to him now. So I'm, I don't, I don't, I'm not saying he can't do a great E3 presentation, but what he's coming off of and what's come out of his previous presentations in terms of expectations versus reality, it's going to be an uphill battle for him to kind of show Starfield, show brand new IP and get people excited who aren't going to be inherently excited because they're screaming at the top of their lungs in the middle of the press conference anytime anybody says anything. Always got to pay for yeah. those screamers, man. And I'm, I'm excited, hopefully, that they have a lot of care uh, like this is a brand new area for lore stuff. Like they've always done a great job with adding to like the fallout lore and adding to uh, the elder scrolls lore and building that up over time. And I know they haven't, I mean, they've been working on the game for a while, but they don't have obviously have all the time they've had with uh, elder scrolls, but I'm hoping for some cool sci-fi like new lore to be injected into this. With hopefully the right timeline and years between humans and uh, other space aliens, you know, just making sure that the timeline it's line probably, up. It's probably going to be in the Skyrim universe because they, they they mention future stuff with like Dwemers and stuff. Well, is it the, the Elder Scrolls Elder Scrolls theory is that it's in the future, like past, like like super future? I, I, I I'm just trying to remember the threads that I, I read online. I I think I, I yeah, there's definitely something with there are hints of like either the future past or the past future but basically I, like they talk about future tech in yeah in so it was something about how the magic in skyrim is actually just very advanced technology it's like nano oh, machines or something more like the magic came out of like uh like a big bang explosion or, because of science it, gone wrong there's something about the dwemer were like robots or something from another like, planet yeah, that they're like they're like robots from the future that got sent. They're they're from yeah. future tech. And they because, got sent back in time. They got amnesia. I mean, like, you I could can't. easily do that. Yeah, that's funny. You could easily do that because Skyrim, like all the Elder Scrolls games, are on planets with weird moons and suns and everything. So you could you could easily be yeah. like, oh, this is in a different galaxy, but part of the same world. So that that would actually genuinely be interesting if uh, they somehow tied that, even in a non meaningful way, but especially in a meaningful way. That that'd be pretty cool. Right. Yeah, I'm expecting it. Yeah, I, I just I just brought it up because I, I think Bethesda has lost its pedigree, at oh, least yeah. in my eyes. And so Starfield, them saying we're working on a sci-fi IP, I'm just like, so freaking what? Yeah. <laughs> like, that's going to do anything, you know? It's, it's kind of like with Bioware from Mass Effect Andromeda to Anthem. It's like, I don't care what you're working on next. You got a lot to prove, buddy. Yeah. yeah. What do you What do you think that they'll show? Like Microsoft I, or Bethesda or both? Be, be, Bethesda for for Starfield specifically. What do you think will actually be at the show? Do you think I think I think it's going to be like they did with Fallout Four, where they do like a 15, 20 minute. We're going to do gameplay, walk and talk, and mm -hmm. have some cinematics cut, and we're have Todd Howard be like, "Look, you can do this, and you can do this, and you can do this," and then it's going to be like, "Okay, okay." And what do we know? How long it's been in production? How many years? It's been rumored for a long time. Before I yeah. want to say before Skyrim, it yeah. was rumored. I don't think it's been a officially. It wasn't officially announced until that one year at E3 where they did that mm. in six. Um, but I feel like someone's been writing, at least vaguely working on it since before yeah. Skyrim. They just got one person. In, like, and the name closet. Starfield, the name Starfield has been rumored for years and years yeah. and years. Yeah. Because uh, Bethesda leaks like a sieve because they treat their employees not that great. So they just turn around and <laughs> leak shit every time. Why wouldn't you? Um, any last minute new stuff? I feel like we should head. To, it is kind of late. I wanted to head towards should wrapping up. Quick hits. Quick hits would quick be hits. great. Yes. Uh, Netflix is reportedly looking to fully expand into video games. Not sure if that is a service or production. Unclear. Disney's new Spider-Man ride at uh, Disneyland features physical microtransactions that make you more powerful during the ride and also give you a small memorabilia. The Outer Worlds franchise is being taken over by Microsoft. This is surprising because during Take-Two's earnings report, they said they were looking forward to money from the Outer Worlds franchise, and then they had to release a statement later basically saying, uh, actually, we don't own that franchise anymore, <laughs> Microsoft. 
<laughs> uh, Skull and Bones, the Ubisoft future game of the year that we've been waiting for forever, has reportedly completely restarted development, will not launch in 2021, according to the rumors, will also not likely launch in 2022. Again. Again. That's they right. They restarted twice. Um, a quick pause here. I don't know if you guys wanted to talk about Horizon Forbidden West. I absolutely don't because it looks like it's just like the first game, which was real, real middling. It, it looked like they tried to improve a lot of things that were not good in the first game. Okay. See, I, I, I saw that and I, I thought it looked really pretty. Obviously, yes. it's going to look pretty. It's a Sony first party, of course. I still felt like she was really weak. Like, just the combat, I could yeah. tell I'm like, I'm going to have a problem with this combat because I had a problem yeah. with the first game's combat. But I'm just so excited to play this game next year on PlayStation Plus. I cannot wait for that. <laughs> I can't wait to play uh, it on PC. You know? I can't wait to play it on Game Pass. <laughs> uh, we have a, a double whammy here from J.K. Abrams. First of all, he confirms that he is going to ruin the Portal movie and is still actively working on a script for it, while also giving an interview in which he states, yeah, I probably should have had an idea of what the story would be for the Star Wars trilogy before I started working on it, you freaking moron. <laughs> we'll uh, say... He was hired to direct one movie. He was not hired yes. to I, create the, the entire Star and he, Wars. And he did not make one good Star Wars movie. But I he will made say, zero. Uh, he's to blame after he got hired for the other movie. But before yes. that, Kathleen Kennedy and the entire team are to yes. blame for it thinking is. this was a way to make Star Wars movies. Fungi all over again. You got to put blame where it belongs. You don't need to apologize for people. <laughs> also, I got to say, if... So JJ's um, involved with this Portal movie, right? That yeah. means probably Dan Trachtenberg might direct it because he directed the thing that got him 10 Cloverfield Lane, which was the Portal short. Oh. And uh, he worked with Bad Robot for that. I think I I think that would be a good fit. I don't know. That would be a good fit, but there's no guarantee of that. I think they're just working on the script right now. Um, I'm just saying. I, I, I just don't, don't think want... he's going to direct it. I don't think JJ is going to direct it. It's up in the air. Who knows? I just I don't want J.J. Abrams involved with any movie that I'm remotely interested in because I think he's a bad director. He's a bad writer. He's a he's mostly a bad producer in that people that he hires can do better than he would do. And I just I don't trust him with anything now. I think he's a good director. I think he's a really bad writer. I think he's a great producer when it's the right script. Yeah, Lost was good. Cloverfield Lane was amazing. Oh my gosh, it was so good. Yes, when, when it's the right script and the right director. In yeah. which case, yeah. I, I feel like because it's not bad, then he probably wasn't that involved <laughs> yeah anyways conjecture jj abrams still sucks be worried about the portal movie it's probably gonna be just as good as the uncharted movie continuing uh we have some rumors heavy rumors that valve is making a switch like portable gaming pc that will run on a custom steam os based on linux and run steam games unreal engine 5 has hit early access all sorts of devs are getting their hands on it and they are impressed borderlands 3 according to randy pitchford will be adding crossplay shortly but not for PlayStation because of publisher reasons, but most likely because it was revealed during the Apple versus Epic lawsuit. I'm sorry, Epic versus Apple lawsuit that PlayStation is charging developers slash publishers to enable crossplay because of their quote unquote lost Ooh. revenue. PlayStation sucks. Finally, Cyberpunk gets a new game director. Who cares? That game's dead. It will never come back. It will absolutely not come back. I don't think there is any way they could redeem that game they would have to build it from scratch and that would be the stupidest thing and it would take years anyways hey well on the upside they haven't released a patch in like three months so yeah and it's you still can't buy it on playstation um right i'm spicy yeah. tonight all right are, are, we, are we up for the subpixel rating system i think so I, 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 do we have something quick? I don't, do we have something we can I don't agree have a game. on <laughs> i don't have a game to nominate so i'm already out. nothing controversial I, I can nominate a game. Go Is for it. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll let you nominate it. You want to talk about Gone Home? No, Ooh. I don't want to talk about Gone Home. I think it's a good. It's <sighs> been a while since it came out. It's a bit controversial. I wanted an easy game. You do you want to talk about Gone Home? Fine. I don't Gone Home, 2013 game by the Fulbright Company. Um, this game is a first-person exploration video game. It's probably about 45 to 90 minutes long. It was during that indie game surge. Uh, it's credited with uh, kind of doing the walking genre. You are walking around a house, picking up objects and items and learning about the occupants and learning about who you are, what your relation to them is. Um, 
how did you guys feel about Gone Home? I like Gone Home. I played it. I played it in college on a laptop that was not meant to play games, so I had a very rough experience gameplay wise. Um, but I enjoyed the story. I think when I played it, it had been, it was in the midst of its sort of critical darling sort of hype, yeah. and I. I didn't think that it it deserved as much as it got. Uh, yeah. But I did enjoy it and thought that it was well done. Yeah. So just to say it, it was nominated for uh, Excellence in Narrative for the Independent Games Festival. Polygon named it their Game of the Year in 2014. It was nominated for several categories at the Game Developers Choice Awards, including Game of the Year. Uh, the Fulbright, the studio, won best debut for it it won the british academy games awards for best debut game and was nominated for best story that's basically the bafta um lots of nine out of tens and ten out of tens for the review score that's that's kind of the critical accolade you're talking about what what do you think will uh, i like gone home a lot um i played it with a bunch of friends in college because one of the professors there it was an assignment to play it because uh, it had just come out and they were like, oh, or not not like it was an assignment to play like an indie game. But it, he mentioned it had just come out or something. So we all sat down and all played it together. Uh, I thought the story was very intriguing. I thought um, it was cool to kind of play with the horror trope of going around a house, but it's not actually a horror like you keep expecting something to be there. And also yeah. the game leads you to that like like satanic room from like the uncle and everything. So you like think something spooky is going to happen. Um, I also really like the, the game had dynamic thunder and lightning system, like a dynamic weather system. And I remember yeah. whoever the lead was on it was talking, I think it was on the giant bomb couch. I can't remember, but uh, people kept tweeting at him like, oh man, you perfectly timed that thunder strike and all this sort of stuff. <laughs> and he would keep telling people like, no, it's random. It's, it's just random. Um, yeah. and, I, and I always thought that was cool. Uh, overall, I, I think it's a great story, great experience. Um, going back to it today would probably be pretty difficult if you played a, a, a. It's like going back to Psycho or going back to Rogue. Like, yeah. uh, like it's a it's a genre defining thing. So you would think it's not good, but it, if you look at it in context, uh, I think I think it's worth all the praise. Yeah, I don't I don't know if I agree with that because I, I played it when it came out. And I wasn't that impressed with it. I, I think it was interesting kind of picking up the ephemera of the people living within the house and piecing together the story that way. But like you mentioned, the horror trope thing, it just felt like it was a poorly done red herring. You know, it wasn't like a like a tongue in cheek cliche or irony. It was just like, oh, house is a little spooky. And then you find some weird story about like the uncle, the great uncle who may have like trying to remember i think it was that your uncle may have been molested by your grandfather or something like that there's like weird little story yeah i can't remember what it was don't go anywhere and there's like a basement area and then the so it's just like a weird game where it didn't really feel like it was steady in what it was trying to present and then it just kind of ends abruptly and, and so i i do think it's very interesting for what it was doing i don't want to say first but what it was very what it was doing experimentally in terms of there are no other characters you're just exploring a house and learning about those characters in a certain way and the story that it was telling i just don't think it was game of the year i don't think it was a nine out of ten and i, I think i was rather shocked to see it get so much praise and reception i think it was i think it was well done but i don't think it was incredible in any way yeah that was um, that was exactly my reaction and i was like i was trying to to marry like the critical reception and i was like maybe it was because of the the way that i played it like it just it, it hit differently and i I haven't replayed in a while, so maybe maybe I would have a different experience. But I just remember thinking that was good. But like, yeah. I don't understand why this would be anyone's game of the year. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And I have. I, I'm just gonna say that the story is good, but I don't even think it's. I don't want to say structured because you're fi you're finding things at, at random order, but it doesn't even hit you that well. Like it's not even impactful in any way. It was just kind of at the end of it, you're like, yeah, that was a neat experience, and you know, well done. But it, none of it was, it wasn't shocking. It wasn't surprising. It wasn't like emotional. It was just like, huh. huh. Um, Zach uh, from Save Data in the chat says it's also a better walking sim than Firewatch. I think Firewatch did everything, I think took everything about Gone Home and did it better. Yeah. Because I the horror stuff Firewatch. 
plays a lot better in Firewatch than it doesn't gone home because it's like a weird mystery thing. Um, I still love uh, and they that, they set it up early on too. Yeah, that like side mystery story in Firewatch is so cool. Yeah. Um, the way they do that. So yeah, I do not I do not agree with you. We're not gonna. I mean, does it beat Brink? I'm not sure at this moment. But I think <laughs> I, I'm gonna kick it off. I would put it at number 15 which is below battlefield 1943 above middle of earth shadow of mordor that's as high as i would go i would possibly go even lower than that i'm i would put it below halo 4 and a, oh, in between halo that's 4 and too low that's mean below halo 4 i'm gonna i'm gonna pull the the genre defining innovation it did above anything that halo 4 did Okay, you know I what? Can, I'm, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm just realizing now that I have issues with our own list. But <laughs> of course, it yeah. should Everyone. it should be it <laughs> should be above Horizon Zero Dawn. Well, welcome to the club, Kyle. <laughs> I <laughs> everyone oh has gosh. problems with this list, including me. <laughs> um, geez. why is Cyberpunk I mean, so low? <laughs> I'm, no, kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, out of while why is it so high let's oh, bring that puppy down um, i just want to say real quick i i was okay with putting our while it's at high because of how well praised it was and because i played an hour of it but i need to move that freaking game now no, it needs just because you're bad at video games doesn't mean it's a bad video game anyways anyways back to gone home i i think we're talking about above halo 4 below outer worlds uh, see, see I, I'm putting it above Halo 4 because I think Halo 4 is an okay Halo game. It's kind of doing what it's done before. It's not amazing, but it's not awful. And I think Gone Home is at least trying something new here. And it may not be overall as successful or enjoyable as Halo 4, but it is taking a step forward in a way. And that's why Gone Home versus Halo 4, I would go Gone Home above. I just think it's better than horizon zero dawn though <laughs> but worse yeah. than that game needs no, to be no i agree game. i if uh, horizon zero dawn i would put below halo 4 at this I'd point put, i'd put it below no man's sky <laughs> much but to jake's uh chagrin i i know but i don't think there's no freaking way we can put gone home above battlefield 1940 I, I know why yeah. did we make this list see that's why we need the great reordering <laughs> Oh my god. It's coming. We get, we need to do that like on our 50th um, episode or something. I would put gone I would agree. I, I think yeah, we're, I'm you're saying 17 Ian? New 17? Yes, below Outer Worlds above Halo 4. I would agree with that. All right. All Just right. because of its innovation of defining a genre. All right. I'm down. Okay. It's still better than Horizon Zero Dawn, though. Yeah, I. You know what? You know, there is a mechanic. For you, cool. Just for no, you, cool. Move it. No, no, no. Don't move it. You just put a little asterisk, like. <laughs> oh, better than. I we we've talked about a mechanic, which is basically you come to the table and instead of offering a new game, you pick a game to rediscuss, and the only rule is, it cannot go back where it was. So you pick a game to rediscuss, and it could be moved up or it could be moved down. And I think the second, I think the second part of the rule is, Will, as this is, this is a, a recommendation, is that, for example, if we pick a game that's number five and it's discussed and it drops to number nine, it then permanently becomes number nine. Locked. Like the Stargate, it gets locked. That's right. Um, Zach, uh, if you want to go see Ian's opinions on the Outer Wilds, he did finish it. It was before the Mass Effect discussion, so uh, rewind that. Um, folks, that's it. We did it. Um, I'm going to read the new ra new ranking here. I hate reading this. <clears throat> number one, Outer Wilds. Number two, Yakuza Zero. Number three, Factoria. Number four, Doom 1993. Number five, Firewatch. Number six, Mirror's Edge. Number seven, Ghost of Tsushima. Number eight, Control. Number nine, Mass Effect 2. Number 10, Prey 2017. Number 11, Shadow of the Colossus. Number 12, Star Wars Battlefront from 2004. Number 13, Horizon Zero Dawn. Number 14, Battlefield 1943. Number 15, Middle Dash Earth, colon, Shadow of Mordor. Number 16, The Outer Worlds. Number 17, Gone Home. We just added that one today number 18 halo 4 number 19 fallout 4 number 20 no man's sky 
Number 21, Daisy. Number 22, Donkey Kong 64. Number 23, Brink. Number 24, Kingdom Hearts 3. And number 25, the worst game of all time, according to Subpixel, Cyberpunk 2077. Everything is good in the world, folks. And I'm going to start the music because I got to go to bed because I'm tired. Uh, let me click that. Let me click that. Let me do that. There we go, folks. That was a show. Ian and Kyle, thank you for joining me today. Uh, it was great to have both of you on here. The core subpixel group without Jake, as it should be. Uh, moving on. Uh, folks, we have a lot of things coming up uh, Saturday night. Ian uh, will be doing a side quest for the Roblox stream. He'll be making an advertisement. That'll be pretty fun. Um, and then uh, on hopefully on Monday, uh, my Dark Souls board game review will be out. Uh, I will be editing that, editing that over the weekend on a crappy MacBook laptop. So let's hope that all works out. Otherwise, it'll be here Tuesday. Um, oh. Moving even... That footage is in 4K, baby. I don't know that's going to work. Yeah, I know. So <laughs> proxy the shit out of it. <laughs> I know. Um, I'm waiting to boot it up. Honestly, it's a good excuse of being like, uh. Um, anyways, uh, folks, you can find all of our stuff, subpixelfilms.com. They'll bring you straight to our YouTube channel. Also, check out our sub subpixel streams channel. It's all the stream archives if you want to check those out. Also, join our Discord. Uh, there are links in our YouTube videos. Also, local chat. D or sorry anchor.fm slash local chat if you want to support us in any way uh you can become a subscriber on there and give us money to make this podcast even better uh that's it that's the whole thing so thank you for tuning in thank you for being here ian and kyle have a lovely weekend and we will see you all next week